This is the Let's Go Win Podcast with your host, J.M. Ryerson. What is happening, you guys? Welcome back to a Tuesday tune-up on the Let's Go Win Podcast. And we are here to help you be happy, healthy, wealthy every single time that we do this. And the gentleman I'm going to bring on today, we are going to work on especially the happy and the healthy And you know what? It's going to increase your wealth, too, because of the work that he does. And we're going to be talking about deep influence. So we're going to give you information to help you manage your mind and emotions so you can remain consistent and congruent in your behaviors. Gary D. Rodriguez is also known as the people mechanic, is an expert in the field of human excellence with over 35 years of experience in leadership, human behavior, relationships, communication, and team dynamics. He's the CEO of Peopleistic LLC USA, an associate professor at the Business Education Institute, and a licensed executive coach. He has studied and trained with various indigenous cultures and is recognized for his cutting-edge leadership training and ability to instill value and motivation in teams. And Gary, thank you for being here, brother. Welcome to the show. It's always good to see you, J.M. I really am uh, happy to be here, and uh, I'm looking forward to our conversation. I am, too. And, I, you know, you cover such a wide range of things that you do. And obviously, I look at leadership, and I look at, you know, training and motivation in teams, and I'm so obsessed by that. But we've talked so much about fears, you know, off air. And so I guess I'll get, I'm going to give you an open form and say, What do you do, Gary? Tell me what you're working on, brother, that's really gets you out of bed and you're just fired up. I know you got a book coming out, uh, another book coming out. So what are you working on, man, that's that's really changing the world for a better place? Well, you know, my uh, my heart and soul and passion is really helping people understand that they've got greatness inside of them, that there is there is really nothing stopping any of us except for a series of beliefs a sequence of pictures, sounds, and feelings that represent the antiquity of our past and all of our collective experiences, some of which has built us to be who we are right now, and some of which cuts at the very root of our ability to take that extra step forward and actually create greatness out of our lives and our contribution. I know for myself and many other people, as we continue to mature, it's almost like you know the clock is ticking. <laughs> if we haven't done it yet to the full capacity that we desire to make our contribution and our legacy, then we kind of have to put the pedal to the metal. And um, that's what I'm, I'm doing right now. I've been doing lots of research, uh, taking a lot of the experiences I've had from you know the 30,000 clients I've, I've coached worldwide and putting it together into the book. And it's really boiling down to what we're doing between our six or seven inches between our ears as far as in leadership goes. Um, One of my big passions is going into organizations and really looking and working with the executive team. Um, I kind of think organizations are like raising a child. And it's, it's a long and tedious job. It's long and the child is modeling every single thing you do. They watch everything about you and they model that from you. So from an executive team perspective, if we want to create this this resonance of a great culture, we have to have a great culture between our ears, Mm -hmm. which means that every member of the executive team has to actually be demonstrating the values, the purpose and the heart. And I'll say the soul of the organization in their everyday interactions with team members, especially with managers. So that always comes down to, if you, if you continue to drill down on that, it comes down to each individual executive team member being able to resolve the things that no longer work for them and at a personal level and be able to have that be generating out into the organization. And I'll ask you this, J.M., have you ever... Have you ever met someone who's at deep peace within themselves about themselves? I have, but they're few and far between, I guess is what I would say. I don't, I wish more people have achieved that. And when we, when we look at deep influence, 
you do not have to have a megaphone. You do not have to have a strategy. And yes, all that is in place for organizations has to be there. However, the deep influence is really about your own resonant field. There's an organization called the HeartMath Institute. Many people have heard of it, but they've done research on what creates influence. And if you go to uh, Rupert Sheldrake's um, theory on morphic resonance, it really, it really blends into what neuroscience is saying now that our, we're shaped by our experiences. And if you look at trauma, trauma will cause someone to be hyper responsive, oftentimes in a not great way because the reptilian brain's clicking on too often, dumping cortisol and adrenaline into their nervous system, and they are either in fight, flight, or freeze. And that oftentimes produces a less than um, leadership type of quality in responses in conversations, in being able to discuss with team members and do collaborative problem solving. It begins to actually cut at the root of that collaboration. It takes years to win trust from people and I'll say loyalty from people. And it takes one conversation or one meeting to destroy it. So unless the, the, the leadership team is taking full ownership of their own individual personal development and evolution, they cannot possibly manage the complexity of the emotions that they will have to be able to experience in the workplace and be able to manage people successfully in a way that garners loyalty and respect. Yeah, it's it's one of those things because you have so many personalities. And let's just take, I don't know, an executive team of 10. We're talking a lot of previous experiences that have shaped these human beings. So to your point, when somebody acts out a little bit, and we haven't actually got to the root cause of what that is. It's just a behavior that we're going to slap on the wrist. That's not going to go away. Is that what you're saying, Gary? When we dive in to do some deep work here to say, look, there's more going on. You do need to take responsibility for what's between your ears. I'm, I'm with that. But you're committed to getting organizations on board. Is that is that what I'm hearing? Well, what has to happen is, first of all, there has to be some foundational leadership training. Just, you know, taking ownership, how to how to have mental, emotional management skills. You can't expect people to manage themselves well if they've never been trained in how to, in the neuroscience of, of emotions, you, they can't do it. You have to give them the skills. So that, that's number one. Number two is doing executive breakthrough coaching with each individual on the executive team. And that is where you can dive very deep and create the breakthroughs. I've had team members be flown in from Hong Kong with different companies I've worked for. And the team member comes in. I hang out with them for two to three days, 10 to 12 hours a day. And the breakthrough happens every time. The bottom line is we all carry history. Most of us have history that is emotionally unresolved. We think we've compartmentalized it well, but feelings buried alive, they do not change. They, they mutate. And many of us have got a great way that the mutation has happened for us because we're, you know, we're pretty functional. But then there's places where we lose our stuff because we can't contain the emotions and the triggers that are happening around us. And anyone in a high pressure situation with multiple personalities and interacting with multiple personalities are going to have whatever unconscious triggers they have be fired off. There'll be someone on the executive team that reminds them of some abuser from the past, and they will not be able to contain it. And as a consequence, passive aggressive behavior happens, sabotaging of projects happens, and or more overt actions happen, which destroys the morale of the executive team, which then filters down and toxifies the rest of, of the teams down below. It starts at the top, and the rest of it drips down. The executive teams have to realize if they're having problem with culture, they have to begin where it starts. With each individual between their ears, number one, because the culture inside of each individual has to be aligned with the overall organizational purpose, vision, and values. And then from there, you have an opportunity and a chance. So I got to ask the basic question, brother. So you're diving in and you're working with the executive team. 
and we didn't do this work prior, but they're on the team and their values aren't aligned. They're truly not in alignment with the other members. In my experience, typically that means a removal. Are you seeing ways to overcome that through some of the work that you're talking about? Because you said a word earlier and that was unconscious. Very specific, the, w- the word you use is unconscious. And this is how so much of us operate, right? It, it's, yeah. Things are happening in our subconscious that we're not aware of why it, this is taking place, but it's happening so fast. So I guess I asked multiple questions there. But the first one is when their values are not aligned, how do you go and attack that, brother? Because I see that more with organizations time and time again we don't have the right fit. I don't care how talented they are. They're not aligned value-wise. It's, it's going to be a tough, tough road to hoe. Well, I'll, I'll put it this way. People are going to have different personal values. That's, that's not a crime. It's fine. Oftentimes, there's a thing called umbrella values, where one person, will, they'll have different, like the top five values always drive behavior. So in that top five values, if there's differences, as long as they're under an umbrella value, So the very first thing is to identify your own values. Differences in individual values is not that big of a a chaotic mess. But what does become a chaotic mess, if they can't align to the overall agreed upon organizational values. So they have to be able through their own personal values to know what they care about most and hold dear, and then develop the organizational values. If they're misaligned to the organizational values, that's where there's a problem. Got it. Got it. Um, so much of what you're talking about, I think the world has become more open to it. Whereas before it would have been like, come on, man, shape up, act a- a- appropriately. But like you talked about heart math, you're seeing some people, whether it's ayahuasca or other psychedelics, trying to get to the subconscious as quickly as humanly possible. What are you seeing, brother, in with your work? Because I know we talked about brain mapping off air, and this is stuff I geek out on. I try to keep it very layman term, and I appreciate the way that you're using it as well. But what are you seeing this field diving into as we learn more and more about the most complex machine in the entire world, our human brain? Is it Are these answers when we're seeing people, whether it's, again, I'll use ayahuasca as one I've heard so much of recently, uh, neurofeedback, uh, some of the feedback mechanisms that we're using through some of the amazing technology. What are you seeing out there, Gary, that's going to help us progress even faster? Because I love that you're helping people in two to three days. Can we shorten it? Is it possible? Um, yeah, it is. I mean, if you look at Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of human needs or even Gregory Bateson's uh, logical levels models, you know, the very top human need and the very top level of logical levels, uh, according to Gregory Bateson's, they're both spirituality. That's not religion. That means who I am and where I belong in the larger in the larger kind of cosmos of space and time. Who the heck am I? What created me? What's my influence? What's my legacy? What's my purpose? So if we start looking there and there is an alignment that the executive executive team comes to and say, look, this is one of my deepest purposes that I want to achieve as a leader. It's this. And maybe it's making a huge contribution to the communities in which they're already serving. And if it's that and they have alignment there to be philanthropic in nature with the profits that they're making, or maybe it's caring for the team members and the staff members and some of the benefits they can do for them. If it's around that kind of humanistic model of the greatest temple that there ever was is a temple of our relationships. So if we began to start expressing ourselves in that context, that's generally a purpose that everyone gets to. And it makes changes very fast because you are aligned at a higher logical level. Gregory Bateson said, if you want to create really quick change, define what that is and align your actions, your beliefs, your identity, your behaviors to that, create alignment and a congruency, and then everything begins to move much faster, much smoother, and much more profitable. Yeah, so asking some of these deeper questions, and maybe that's why the word deep is so prevalent, is 
we're not talking surface level like, all right, Joe, what did you do for, over the weekend? We're diving into, let's talk about the way the, you know, your values, what the way you grew up, you know, getting to some of these things in your work. Is that where you're finding out some of their traumas? Because again, I, I believe very strongly there are people that have been victims. I, I, they have of whatever circumstance, right? No child should be molested. No child should be some of the awful things that happen to human beings. That is not their responsibility. However, they are responsible for their moving forward, regardless of circumstance. So I guess that's my, my thought here, Gary, is do you, do you agree where they need to take responsibility for themselves, regardless of what had happened previously? Yes, because, you know, I come from that background. You know, I had a lot of a lot of trauma as, uh, as a kid. In my household, there was alcohol addiction, drug addiction, child molestation, rape, everything that could happen, attempted murder, everything that could happen, happened. And what I walked away with was, um, you know, I mean, it was a, I was a very serious IV drug addict when I was in my teens. And seriously, I had a death wish because I couldn't handle what had happened to me. And that's the only way that I was able to handle it and return back to some semblance of myself. I had this spiritual experience. I got clean and sober in 12 hours. You know, I was good. I went on a quest to figure out how, because a lot of people experience what I, I experienced and to varying degrees, how do we then begin to start managing? We didn't have a choice then, we have a choice now. And the only way that we can do that is figure out the biology of our own emotions, open up the owner's manual for our own human mind, and begin to educate ourselves on how to shift the internal representations of our past. So think about it this way. Our memories, those core traumas, those core events that pivoted our lives, they're only picture sounds and feelings held together by emotions. The event enters our nervous system in a very specific sequence of pictures, sounds, feelings, smells, and tastes. As it enters in, it creates an imprint held deep within our nervous system. That, if you know how something works, you can change it. So I developed a system that decodes those pictures, sounds, and feelings, and how that event originally entered the nervous system. And I've been able to create miraculous changes around trauma from anywhere from five minutes to 30 minutes and so it's not a laborious process. I have, and then I train people that I coach. Look, make a list of all the times you felt persecuted. <clears throat> make a list of all the times you were really, really emotionally hurt because that's where your anger is coming from. And they make a list. Sometimes there's 30 or 40 pieces. I teach them how to do a very quick process, self-facilitated, and they go through it and they start to manage their own history. In other words, you have to make people aware how their nervous system is, how they hold their memories, what has been stopping them, because the way we create our perspectives of how we see life is a core significant, significant event happens. We create a constellation of meaning or beliefs around that event. And this has happened since we came out of the womb. And so if those beliefs are the things that actually create the perspective that we respond to the world through, and they are, and if they're loaded with unresolved negative emotions, we're going to be way more reactive than proactive, way more emotional than rational. We will not be able to resolve things in a way that is collaborative and communicating in a way that is going to honor the experiences and the perspectives of other people. We're going to be dominant. We'll be fear-driven. Our voice tonality will betray us and we'll create a fence and people will call us bullies and people will call us something else. The bottom line is if we do not take ownership of how our emotional system works and what drives that emotional system, we can't possibly lead with congruency and consistency, which is of course what Peter Drucker defined leadership as. It's not about being clever are smart. It's about being consistent and congruent that will engender the trust of others. Yeah. And you know, the main thing I hope people really hear is there's a solution. There Some of these <laughs> deep, dark things that you don't want to face that continue to pop up in your life and create havoc for years. I don't care how long it's been. 
there are real solutions, Gary, for people. And I want them to be able to, you have to face it at some point, right? It's a part of what you have to do. However, there's a real solution to you not having this stuff show up in your marriage and your business as a, as a parent, all the hats that you wear, if you can just face it. And uh, brother, that's, I think it's brilliant. Um, I can't believe how fast time is flying. I obviously want to give you last little bit here to anything I didn't ask you. I should have known enough to ask and then where they can find you as well, Gary. Okay. Well, I just want to say that th this one thing that, that we create ourselves by the next highest or lowest thought about ourselves. Whatever we focus on with our minds and our thoughts and our language actually directionalizes our thinking. So our language requires to transform into transformative leadership language. That will help us direct our focus and our attention and our thinking. We have to resolve the past emotional states that we've never addressed in a way that's simple and fast. And there's a method for that. We can shift our limiting beliefs and no more than a half hour. I've got a system for that. We can align our values. We can define our purpose. As an executive team, we have to come together collaboratively with a major vision that is a high enough level that bonds every single person on that executive team so they know where they're going, they know what they have to do, and they know that any diversion from that is chipping away at the foundation of that ultimate vision. They need to be coached. They need to have breakthroughs. And if an organization wants their culture to change, you start at the top. You don't start with doing assessments and getting everybody else to like change and give you feedback. You start at the top first, and that begins to start the systemic change throughout the entire organization. You have to change as a leader. That's your responsibility. And when you do that, the culture begins to shift. That's beautiful, brother. I, I love the work that you do. And again, so much of what you do, I I. I coach on, I am a, a part of, I'm such a believer. How can people connect with you, Gary, to learn more about what you're doing online, find the book when it comes out? What's the best place to connect with you online? Um, you can, um, you can Google me at, uh, at our website. It's www.peopleistic.com. That's P E O P L E. Then I S T I C peopleistic.com. Um, and you're always welcome to email me. I'm, you know, I check email all the time. So it's just Gary at peopleistic.com. And I'm happy to answer questions or hold conversations. You guys, check him out. I mean, he's talking five minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes is the longest I heard to really deal with some serious challenges that I mean prop up. They, you see them and he's got real solutions for you. Gary, brother, I appreciate you being here and sharing your insight. Congrats on the upcoming book. I, I think it's amazing. Well, thank you, my friend. I'm looking forward to a future conversation with you because there's so much more to talk about. We really didn't hardly scratch the surface. Maybe I picked the wrong show. I picked the shorter of the two. And here I'm like, man, we have so much to talk about. But brother, I appreciate you so much. Oh, thank you so much, my friend. It's really, um, thank you for the opportunity. I look forward yeah. to it again. Yeah, you guys, please go check out Gary and his work. I think it's so impactful. I think it's so important. Again, I want you to be happy, healthy, wealthy. That's the whole point of the show. And you have a solution right in front of you. Check out Peopleistic. Email him. He gave you his direct email. Go check it out. Share this with other people. People definitely have challenges. They show up in their leadership as a parent, all the different ways, and there are real solutions. I appreciate you all. Until next time. Your mindset matters, and we'll talk soon. Thank you so much for listening. If this content is delivering value to you, please make sure to subscribe, rate, and review us. That helps us build this community, and that is what we are all about. Building this community as big as we can, helping as many people as we can, and deliver as much value as possible. Be sure to head over to letsgowinpodcast.com for information on my coaching courses and make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn at Let's Go Win 365. Let's go win and transcend in life. This is the Let's Go Win Podcast with your host, J.M. Ryerson. 